Jeevan Singh is the Director of Product Security at Twilio, where he's embedding security into all aspects of the software development process. Jeevan enjoys building security culture within organizations and educating staff on security best practices. He's responsible for a wide variety of tasks, including architecting security solutions, working with dev teams to resolve security vulns, and building out security features. Before life in the security space, Jeevan had a wide variety of development and leadership roles over the past 15 years. Jeevan joins us to talk about the future of application security engineers. He explains the different required skill sets and the path that anyone can take to become a senior application security engineer. He also gives us some perspective on how this works in the startup world when you're not an enterprise. And as a bonus, there's a mini episode within this episode when Jeevan covers the democratization of vulnerability management. He uses that as an example. If you're in AppSec or you want to be in AppSec, this episode will provide you a roadmap of ideas for the future. We hope you enjoyed this conversation with Jeevan Singh. Coding more securely from the start saves your organization time and money while protecting yours and your customers' data. Security Journey provides hands-on secure coding training in an application sandbox that allows developers to identify, break, and fix common security vulnerabilities. Give your developers the opportunity to recognize and prevent common and emerging security issues before they become a problem. Visit securityjourney.com to try our training today. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the Application Security Podcast. This is Chris Romeo. I'm the CEO of Curve Ventures and also joined by my application security partner in crime, Robert Hurlbut. Hey, Robert. Hey, Chris. Yeah, Robert Hurlbut, and I'm a principal application security architect and threat modeling lead at Acquia. And uh, again, as you mentioned, uh, really excited to be here as another application security podcast gets away here. Yeah. And uh, a topic, a new topic. Often we're talking about things that people could be saying, hey, well, it feels like you kind of talked about this one before. But in this case, we have something new. And so we're super excited to have Jeevan Singh back with us for a second visit to the podcast. And so when we have a reoccurring guest, we don't ask them to tell their origin story. But I do want to share a pointer. If you want to go and hear Jeevan's origin story, it's in an episode entitled Threat Modeling Based in Democracy, which, I mean, come on, talk about just an excellent concept of what he explained to us the first time around. So if you didn't hear that episode, you you really should uh, go listen to that. It's pretty pretty different than what we're going to talk about today, but still was was an excellent episode on Jeevan's approach to threat modeling inside of a, a pretty good-sized organization. But with that, um, Robert, I think you wanted to kick off this, this first topic or this topic we're going to talk about with Jeevan today. Yeah. So Jeevan, uh, how would you describe the future of application security engineer? And, and just to give a little context, I remember you wrote a, a, a post on this on LinkedIn and it really captured our attention. And here you are again on our podcast. So, so welcome, uh, you two, anybody listening, if you put something really interesting on LinkedIn, you might be on our podcast as well, but, uh, let's dive into this. Uh, what's the future? Yeah. Uh, what's a future application security engineer? I think one of the problems is I'm very opinionated on things, <laughs> which uh, lands me in uh, hot water sometimes. Uh, but, uh, the, We've seen a lot of changes to application security over the last few decades. Um, initially, people need to just have understand what is security and help developers solve security problems. As companies started to grow, we needed application security engineers to also be really strong at software development. Uh, a lot of uh, application security teams are small, um, and we can't scale uh, unless we have we build our own programs, products, features to really help ensure that we're covering um, the entire ecosystem. And the third iteration, which I think we're slowly getting into right now, is that we're, there's an expectation that even with both uh, helping developers with their security problems, as well as software development, um, that's not enough. Uh, we're not 
we're not winning the battle, we're falling behind, there's too many engineers that we need to help with. So the expectation is now um, we need to actually teach development. Um, so that third skill that we need to have is being able to be teachers within our uh, environment. And we've sort of seen it uh, a while ago with when developers were just doing software development. And when they were done with their software development, they would throw their code over the wall to the QA folks and say, hey, I've done the development. It's your problem to make sure that you have we have high quality for this feature. Um, but uh, the quality engineers and developers start to work uh, really closely together. Developers started to write a lot more tests uh, with respect to the features that they had. And now the developers sort of own that sort of experience. And we're going to see that with security, where developers are now going to be a lot more responsible for security. And since they're now going to be responsible for security, there's an expectation that they should also know how to do security. And as application security engineers, we have to help them on that journey. So when you think about the universe of application security engineers that exist today, do you have any idea how many people, can we even take a guess at how many people exist in this role today? Any any idea or thoughts? Not enough. I, think. <laughs> so, I know not right, enough is right, definitely the right. answer. Um, I, I, they always point back to like a million unfilled headcount for um, as security jobs in general. And I feel that over the last few years, AppSec engineers must start taking a bigger and bigger bite of that million unfilled roles. Um, application security is getting way more important and finally getting the due that we've deserved for a long time. So um, I, the space is small. Uh, I know that uh, um, when I go to our biggest of events, Global AppSec uh, put on by OWASP, um, best case scenario, there's 800 or 1,000 of us. So I, yeah. I, I still feel that the space is small and we, we need a lot more support uh, in our industry. Yeah, I feel like there's... I mean, maybe 5,000 AppSec engineers that exist in total. Um, not everybody, can, maybe 10,000 at most. Not everybody can get out to the big conferences and stuff. But I feel like, to your point, this is something that is about to explode from a demand perspective. And I was joking uh, in, in the talk I did at RSA on the state of the union of application security and also joking with some other friends uh, around the RSA conference in different settings. But the year of the application is really... Is, is upon us. And I don't know if it's going to be 23, 24, 25, like what year it's actually going to hit. But think about all of the investments that have been made, like in infrastructure security, in information security, in all of the things that are happening from a cloud security perspective. Like a lot of, a lot of the, the core levels have gotten a lot of attention and a lot of investment. Application security is not in that same boat. Not anywhere near the amount of of thought that's and 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 resources and budget that have gone in that 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 we've seen in like infrastructure or cloud security. And so I, I'm predicting, and I know it's dangerous to make predictions sometimes, but the year of the application is is coming soon. And I think that's why this topic is is resonating with, with me so much, thinking about the future of these folks, because we're going to need more application security engineers to be able to support. The, the drive uh, to secure the applications when when people kind of finally wake up and say, well, we've got everything else kind of covered, but this application thing we really haven't done a lot with. There's going to be a, a gigantic demand there. And so, Jeevan, from your perspective, why why is this topic important to you? Why does this even matter from your perspective? Yeah, it, it matters because this is the need of the industry. Um, I, I've been in a bunch of roles now where I never felt that we were fully ready for battle. Um, and when I've made battle, it's really partnership with engineering. It's not like we're uh, fighting against them, but it's like battling the threat actors that are attempting. We all see the noise in our application logs. We always see either bug bounty research or what I hope are bug bounty researchers attacking our systems. Uh, but yeah, we see it. Um, we know that our bad actors are out there. Um, and a lot of our companies that we've been at uh, have been have had incidents uh, due to threat actors. I know that uh, 
the current one that I've been at, uh, we had an incident in August and, and we just need more people to come in and be able to help us out and support it. Um, I'm extremely passionate about it so much so that I've been a part of OWASP for the last five, seven years, um, helping out, trying to build out the community here in Vancouver and making sure that the future application security engineers ha have that cap capabilities that we need when they need to come in and be able to hit the ground running. Hmm. Yeah, and you're talking to, to two OWASP lifetime members here on the line. So um, we're, we're also big supporters of OWASP. And we don't, I mean, I, I would say, I'll, I'll speak for myself, I don't always agree 100% with everything that's happening, but I agree with the mission. And I think Andrew and the rest of the team there that are part of the OWASP Central Group are, are doing a great job of trying to push stuff forward. Um, there, there, there's a lot of constraints that exist, and but they're doing. They're, 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 Andrew's really been good at Andrew Vanderstock, who's taken over. For those that may not remember, Andrew's taken over as the the um, one of the leaders of the the OWASP. Uh, organization and he's really done a lot of good stuff to push things forward and and uh i think that's that there's just a lot of a lot more good stuff that's going to happen in the future and when i think about the future of application security engineers um, one of the things i've been telling developers that i meet with like especially in the the development of security champions kind of programs i keep telling folks like you want to talk about a unicorn if you're a C, if you have senior dev skills and mid-level even appsec skills to senior appsec skills, you want to talk about being a unicorn. You're a unicorn, and you can write. You just write a number and push it across the table, and a lot of people will pay you that. <laughs> Whatever you write on that piece of paper, they're going to pay you because that level of of connection of skills is just not a lot of people. I mean. I can, we could start naming people that we all know that uh, kind of fit into that category, but there's just not a lot of people with that skill set. So I'm totally with you as well. Like we've got, there's, there's a lot of room to grow people into this industry and prepare them to do these things. Yeah. I, I don't expect um, every single application security engineer to be good at uh, the AppSec skills like threat modeling, bug bounty, pen testing, and all that, as well as software development, as well as being able to teach. But they'll be stronger in some areas, but they should have a, at least foundational understanding for all of those areas. So, but you're right. The, there are unicorns and you're right. I can count on the number of uh, individuals I know that are good at all those areas on my hand. It, it is, those are hard, hard skills to acquire. And it takes a lot of time being in the industry to be able to build up that skill set. So of those three, you know, so AppSec skills, software development skills, and teaching skills, um, could you describe some of those that, uh, and what you mean by those in terms of those particular skill sets? Yeah, that's very fair. Um, and so app, application security skills fall under the traditional AppSec uh, uh, behaviors and roles. So I do expect people to be really good at security reviews or threat modeling, be able to dive deep, partner with engineering, make sure that they understand how to design their features, um, but they also need to be able to run a bug bounty and know how to build a community of researchers so that they want to continue testing your um, web application. Um, and you have to know how to deal with vendors uh, when you're procuring a pen test uh, and be able to get the most out of the vendors to do a real strong pen test. Uh, um, so. All those sort of traditional skills, you know how you have to know how to use the tooling, SAS, TAST, uh, um, all sorts of SCA, all those all those sorts of tools uh, in general, and how to integrate and all that. So uh, that in itself is is quite difficult and requires a lot of experience. And even on the tooling side, uh, I see a lot of um, folks uh, that uh, um, partially integrate tools as well. They don't fully integrate tools. Um, they don't have coverage or metrics and. They don't even know how to, or they don't rather um, burn, use the tools to actually burn down risk. So uh, I'm asking a lot for um, future AppSec folks when you have to be good at just application security skills and just be able to dive very, very deep in all those domains uh, in itself. Now, with respect to software development, I, I have a great example. Um, there's a member of my team, Alejandro, that... Uh, um, as we started to really integrate tools on our ecosystem, um, we want to make it in a way that we are able to pull the data out of the tools and present them into dashboards for our security leadership, but also engineering leadership. We don't 
one of the thing, philosophies that we have is that we don't want to drown our engineering team with tickets. We want to be able to do the crawl, walk, and run methodology first. Let's present them dashboards so they actually know how good or bad their posture is. Um, then we'll analyze the data and work with them and burn um, the critical vulnerabilities uh, as much as we can. And then we eventually will start taking them. Um, Alejandro noti noticing that we're doing this quite inefficient. Um, why are we um, integrating one tool? They change our APIs. It breaks all these other things. Um, there's got to be a better way that we can actually um, integrate all of our tools in a more standardized framework level. So he built a um, what a tool that he calls Multivac, where um, it will uh, it has a AWS Lambda. It will call the API of the tools, suck that information, and it spits it through our systems, um, and will eventually land in our data visualization tool. Um, but the good thing is that um, as a application security engineer, we only have to build that Lambda, and just everything else will take care of it. Um, it'll um, suck in the appropriate metrics, and put it into the uh, data visualization tool. It will let you know if uh, the end API endpoint is down. Um, if there are errors as a part of it, you get all that for free. And that's the expectation where I have for application security engineers when we're building these tools. It didn't make sense that we would build this one tool, takes us maybe two months to integrate or whatever amount of time, and do that eight times for all of the tools that we have in our ecosystem. Rather, we just build the framework, and then we just build up the lambdas that just pulls in the data and the rest will be taken care of. So that's where I'm looking for software development. It really helps us with skills. But on the flip side, I also look at um, if we're analyzing the tooling data um, and we say notice that, hey, you know what? It, we can probably burn down 80% of our critical vulnerabilities if we do X, Y, and Z. And if we partner with the engineering team, we can actually sit down with them we can code it out together and we can actually eliminate. So there might be multiple different ways where your software development skills as an application security engineer will help you with the ultimate um, goal, which is burning down risk in itself. What about the teaching skills? So we didn't uh, we didn't get to that one. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, what, what do you mean by the teaching skills? Yeah, so it, it sort of goes back to the democratization of threat modeling, um, but beyond that as well, where we, we have to do a couple of things when it comes to being teachers. One is we actually have to develop the content and we have to develop it in a way that the engineers can actually learn it. Um, so uh, the threat modeling content itself, um, it took me a month or so to develop. Um, and really refine. I had beta engineering teams. We sat through it. I realized how my first iterations need to get better and better. Um, I iterated it a couple of times and it was pretty solid after that. But you have to be able to deliver the content that even a junior engineer gains something out of it, as well as a staff or principal level engineer. So um, developing a content is a particular skill. It takes a lot of just being on the dev side to have uh, knowledge of how they think and how they will actually respond to it. And then the other side of it is actually teaching them. So you actually deliver the content as well. So developing the content is one part, but delivering it as well. And um, it, it's hard. It's hard to deliver the content in a way that um, it will make allow for the engineers to actually understand the content. You have to be empathetic. Um, you have to be forceful. Uh, if you notice them, blank stares. Uh, you have to call out people and say, hey, what, what's on your mind? Why? What are you not understanding? Um, and you also have to be able to um, build up those examples that you need so that it provides interaction amongst the teams as well. So I know a lot of people learn, uh, a lot of people learn by just uh, listening. A lot of people learn by doing hands-on. A lot of people learn by doing group work. So you, you have to be, as a teacher, you have to be able to understand what type of behaviors will allow the individuals to gain the most of your uh, trainings. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the challenges that we all had, um, I'm sure going uh, in through the AppSec, uh, uh, building our own application security skills is that we go to these trainings that would be a day's worth of content. And it's really hard to retain any of that. So. You have to be able to build the training in itself where hopefully they can retain 75, 80% of the training itself. 
and the rest they'll learn um, while they do the hands-on work uh, for threat modeling or beyond. Um, threat modeling was just one of the categories that uh, we're building out for our trainings. We also have a uh, secure coding training where we actually show them what are some things that you need to look out for when you're doing code reviews, um, as well as like think like an attacker. What are some of the things that attacker, how is he going to exploit your systems? So there's a number of uh, trainings that we can actually provide our engineers so that they, they can grow um, and learn security themselves. Curious to get your take on uh, when I think about these three different things, AppSec skills, software development skills, and teaching skills. For, in my mind, two of those three I can teach people how to do. One of them requires somebody who has some, I, I think of teaching ability personally as something that someone has natural ability to do, to be able to. And I, and I think, you know, and I'm looking across the three of us, I know we've all taught classes at different perspectives. I think we're all, I think we're all people that have that ability because I know I've seen Robert teach classes and even I've heard you tell stories about, you know, things you've done in, in teaching classes and things and teaching developers how to do certain things. Do you think you can teach, can you teach someone to be, to have teaching, are teaching skills teachable? Can you teach, can everybody, can all of your AppSec engineers teach? And is, should they be, should they have to teach to be at this level that we're talking about? Oh, that's a great question. I, I really feel that everyone can teach and everyone has something to teach. But I do know that folks on my team would be, there would be folks that shy away from it because it is, it is hard. It, it is really hard to uh, teach. And, um, and that's how I sort of feel that I would build out a team as well. Um, I would have a core team that mostly focuses on AppSec stuff and another team that mostly focuses on software development, another team that mostly focuses on content and content delivery. But, um, I would allow folks to be able to do all of, all of those if they want to grow their careers. So um, I, I do expect that as you mature in your um, career, um, the senior staff, principal, architect level engineers, they would start gravitating towards the instructor uh, sort of uh, uh, role within the team you know, mm -hmm. and may do a little bit more of that because uh, they went through it. They've been in the trenches. They understand things. And um, I, I assume they're like me, where I don't want people to make the same mistakes that I've made in my career. I want them to learn and grow and um, be better than me. So I see more of the senior folks uh, sort of gravitating towards that. Um, and then I do definitely see a lot more of the junior ones focusing on the AppSec uh, skills and potentially the software development as well, just because those are the um, skills that are a little bit more well-defined and easier to grasp uh, earlier in your careers. So that, that, that's where I sort of uh, see it um, um, as a career progression standpoint, but also like a team side where uh, I wouldn't want, I want people to be able to sort of align their um, roles to where they feel that they can make the biggest impact. Yeah. Yeah. And I like, I like the, the, where you landed there because I would, I guess I would take it a step further and say, a staff engineer that cannot teach is not a staff engineer. Yeah. That's part of part of reaching that pinnacle in the in the engineering or the security community or anything <clears throat> is being able to like a in my mind a staff engineer should make 10 junior and mid-level engineers 2x from what they do because that because the, the one of the junior or mid-level folks should be able to turn to a staff engineer and say, okay, I've tried this, I've tried this, I've tried this, I'm stuck. The staff engineer should be able to say, well, let me just take you through a little bit. Let me give you five minutes on what I, how I would approach that. Boom. You've, you've unlocked that person. Now you're not going to do it for them. You're not look, you're not pair programming and they're watching how great you are. You've, you've unlocked their ability to go to the next level on, on a problem that you've already, to your point, you've already been, you've already experienced it. You did it wrong. You, it didn't work. It had a vulnerability, whatever was wrong with it. Right? Like you, you're able to then instill that knowledge. And, but that to me, that's teaching. Like there's classroom teaching, there's coaching, these things are all part of being a, a senior anything in yeah. my mind. And so that's, that's kind of where I land on that. Yeah. Whenever I do performance reviews, uh, those at the staff and principal level, what we call it is the multiplier. You have to be yeah. well beyond just 
your level of impact. You have to be a multiplier and make all other people be able to do your level of impact as well. So the programs, the role itself, um, they have to choose them or focus on them where they can actually multiply the effort that they put in. I like that. I'm going to use that going forward, that multiplier effect. I think that's a good, that's a good, very positive way of, of describing what we're expecting people. If you want to be called a staff engineer, you better already be multiplying people. And then we promote, you know, I guess I'm somebody who I always promote people to what they're, you better do the job. You want the promotion? Great. You want to be a staff engineer? I'll watch. And when you act like a staff engineer for a while, then I'll to go file the paper and make you a staff engineer. That's maybe I'm old school from that perspective, but that's how I approach the world. Let's uh, let's tackle uh, an issue that uh, Jeevan, you brought up in your kind of initial thoughts about this. That some people are gonna are gonna be like, oh, there's gonna be some groans behind the scenes. But uh, I, I know where you're going with this, and I'm super excited for you to answer. Are soft skills a requirement for the future application security engineer? How do soft skills play into to being a successful AppSec engineer. Yeah, that that's the lesson that I learned very, very early on. Um, so uh, security engineers, we we could only make a certain amount of impact. Um, and our job is to actually influence the business to do the right thing. So um, what I've learned is that the most important skill Actually, the second most important, the most important skill I feel that for application security engineer in, gen in general is empathy. Um, and you need to be able to empathize with your stakeholders, with the, your clients, with your partners, and be able to deliver the functionality that you need uh, just in general. But the second most important skill is influence. And it has to be directed influence. Um, so what I mean by that is that if you are establishing a new program, um, while it's important to influence the individual compute contributors on your team or on uh, the engineering teams, um, that won't get you the amount of uh, return of investment as you would for uh, directing that influence at the leadership level, making sure that you're focusing on um, engineering leadership or the execs and making sure that they understand why it's important to do whatever you need to do. So. Once you've actually established that influence, um, once they understand uh, data-driven um, how well the security program is doing, then I I would recommend that you start focusing on the IC level so that you build a culture within the organization. So um, in order to do that, you actually have to have influence skills. And those are hard skills to gain in general. It's something that you need to do through practice. You have to realize your team isn't the AppSec team, it's the business in itself. Mm -hmm. And the folks that are actually doing the work are likely going to be the engineers. So uh, in order to get them to do the right security work, you shouldn't be doing it. You shouldn't be fixing vulnerabilities yourself. You should be really guiding the business to fix vulnerabilities and being able to influence the uh, business to fix vulnerabilities at scale. So, mm -hmm. yeah, very, yeah, very important me, skill. Yeah. I, I agree 100%. And, you know, when I think back through my career, like I'm never the smartest person in the room. I'm never the best security person in the room. But but for whatever reason, I learned at a pretty early age how to use influence, how to collaborate and get people thinking in the same direction and then going in a direction. And it really is a a, a, a super blessing to to just be able to. I, and I don't even. It's not like I think about it, but. It's it's soft skills are just so important to just even know how to talk to people, because as you said, we're trying to influence, we're trying to we're trying to go to um, somebody and, and we, they don't report to us. So we can't use positional power to say you must do this. You don't have any positional power. All you have is that influence. And so you have to be able to show them what is in it for them. What are you going to get? What, what's the reward for you as a result of going down this path that I know I'm telling you that, that you know in the short term is going to be more work. So I'm literally asking you to do more work, but in the in the end, it's going to make your life better. And it's, it's about being able to describe that. And so I, I think we still don't focus on this enough. Okay. And whenever you talk about it, like if I did a, let's say I did a class at, um, I, I put in a, a training for OWASP Global and it was called Soft Skills for AppSec Professionals. Nobody would show up. It would be empty, unfortunately. Like, in, which is sad because, like, 
if you if if someone if people took that class they would vault their career like <laughs> multiple levels because those are the things that you you, you can't really read a textbook yeah. about about this stuff. And so, yeah, I'm with you too. I think soft skills are so crucial and, and they're so often neglected. It, it, it all ties back in as well. Like uh, influence, soft skills, teaching, they all are all part of the same sort of ecosystem. Um, and if you do well in one, you can do well in others as well. So um, I, soft skills is out of those app sec and uh, software development skills, uh, you will find that soft skills is going to be a much more important part of a uh, toolbox that uh, every application security engineer needs to have. So you may have already touched on this about a junior uh, developer, but but are they also expected to have all those skills or are they looking towards sort of a, a, a path to get to where they do have those skills, as we've talked about a staff engineer or somebody like that. Yeah, at the junior level, it, you're right. Like it, it'll, there'll be a path to get those skills. Um, whenever I do hire at the junior level, um, junior intermediate level, the most important thing that I look for is um, that hunger, that desire, that passion for security. And that sometimes is hard to teach as well. Um, uh, so those that are really hungry, that really want to consume knowledge and grow, uh, uh, that's what I look out for. And then I know that I can, those uh, technical skills, no problem. We can, you just need experience, you'll get that. And then we slowly get them um, as part of, maybe they'll start uh, joining some of the training sessions and understand how we deliver it. Then they'll actually shadow one of us um, and do it. And then what we like to do is also reverse shadow. So. Um, they will uh, lead it and uh, maybe uh, an individual on the more senior individual on the team would be a part of it and sort of jumping in if uh, there are some little gaps uh, as the training that they're trying to deliver. So a lot of different ways for those uh, junior folks to sort of scale up. But uh, usually the junior folks, we're not, we're not looking for all three of those skills to be there, but more of that uh, desire to gain those skills and how strong that desire is. So if we change gears a little bit and think about now the team, instead of just individual AppSec engineers, how do you scale a team based on all of these things we've talked about with different skill sets, different seniority levels? How does this come together in a team? Yeah. And how does it scale? How does it scale? It's probably the most important part. Yeah. I think the biggest problem that we have as application security engineers or even the security team is that our engineering counterparts grow way faster than we do. Um, and it'll never, we never have a ratio that will always stay the same. Um, they will hire several hundred before we make it a couple of more folks on our team. Um, so the things that we have to sort of realize is that um, through there's various ways to scale. So um, those application security skills that we talked about, um, uh, threat modeling, uh, and uh, well, doing it one at a time is not going to scale. And if they're hiring hundreds of engineers, they're going to be pushing out so many new features. We're not going to be able to review. Our queues are going to get longer. So which is why we have to rely on the teaching aspect and allowing them to do the heavy lifting there. Um, similar sort of deal with uh, code reviews. So um, it's very, it's not bad in a smaller company. Um, we can sit down and actually do a manual code review. But as we start adding hundreds or thousands of engineers to the team, you're not going to do any more manual code reviews. It doesn't make sense. You really have to put the tools in place where we actually can scale. So um, every sort of program be one by one. But um, it, it always goes back to really the teaching aspect of things. And I think uh, maybe even a topic that you really like talking about, Chris, is like building up those champions. Um, I, the, I really want to make sure that those the engineering champions for security are as strong as maybe a junior or an intermediate uh, security engineer, where they're able to have the basic skills of um adding your repo to a SAST or SCA, or be able to understand what are the results coming out for your team for those security vulnerabilities, being able to come up with a remediation plan, 
uh, being able to work closely with the security folks and understand our guidance um, and be really that first level of uh, support for the security team and answering all those sort of questions so that when there are more difficult and deeper questions, then we pull up in the security engineer. So um, really relying on our teaching capabilities our app skills capabilities and software development capabilities to help us scale, but also building out programs that really make it easier for us to um, extend our team in itself and work with uh, other folks uh, within engineering. And how does that play uh, in, so you talked sort of around maybe larger organizations, but how does that play into a small organization that maybe only has one or two AppSec engineers? Yeah, it's a, different ball game because you have to be very focused with your plan. Um, you can't do everything uh, with a smaller team. You can't do everything. And um, fortunately, I got off a call very recently with someone on a very small team and they're like, okay, um, there are at least a hundred different fires that I have. How do I decide which fire is the most important? And uh, funnily enough, um, my first question was, um, does the business really care about security? Um, so sometimes you, they hire security engineers um, for like that's what the industry is doing. Maybe that's what I need to be doing, compliance reasons, whatever. Um, but uh, they're not as um, informed about what security can and should be doing. So uh, my question to them was that, should we focus on building influence first? Um, Let's start first reporting on, let's get the data that we have currently in the um, in the company and sort of figure out how well are you all doing with security? Um, they mentioned that a lot of P1 vulnerabilities are over SLA. There's no um, incentive to actually fix things. I'm like, yeah, that very common in smaller organizations. Unfortunately, it's still common in bigger organizations too. But uh, in smaller organizations, you have to incentivize folks to actually fix those vulnerabilities. So you team up with your security leadership uh, and engineering leadership. Have uh, Provide them the actual metrics of what's going on. Say that uh, this is how much security technical debt that we are accruing. And this is how we need to address that security technical debt. And also loop in the executive so that they are aware um, for it as well. Um, one of the more uh, memorable programs that we put out is a democratized vulnerability management, um, where we actually decided that security should not be part of the XLA extension process. We don't own those vulnerabilities. The engineering team does. So why are we a blocker or why are they coming to us to ask for extension? So what we did is we actually put the engineering leadership as part of it. So P4, P5s, uh, engineering managers can extend and self uh, uh, go through that self-service process. P3s go to directors. P2s go to the VPs. P1s can go to your executive if you're at a small company. And what would happen is when the executives actually understand there are um, P1s that are going to them for extensions, they're going to ask more questions. Why are we extending this? We've extended it two times already. Why aren't we addressing this? Um, my favorite story is when we had a VP of engineering, he extended it once and then the engineering team came back to him and saying, hey, we need to extend this again. He's like, okay, let's, let's hold on one second. I've already extended it once. If anything happens because of this vulnerability, they're gonna point fingers at me because <laughs> this is my vulnerability. So. Before I extend it, I need to know who's going to work on it, what's the plan, and how long it's going to take. Uh, by the end of the day, they got that. They said, okay, this is the plan. This is the individual that's going to work on it. It's going to take six weeks. Um, it was fixed in a week and a half because no one was going to go back to that VP of engineering and ask for another extension. So once you are able to involve the executives and the engineering leadership as part of it, they will influence them to be a part of these programs they will start um, exerting their influence on the engineering org mm. as well. Well, we just got a there's, a, there's a mini episode included right within this episode. The democratization of vulnerability management was a little, a little bit of a carve out here that just happened, but I, I love that. That's, that's, that's uh, such a neat way to approach it. 
you know, put it, it's this, I love the, what you just said, like, this is not securities thing. This is engineering's thing. Why are we getting in the middle of it? Establish the governance from an SLA perspective, set up the systems and processes to make it work and then get the heck out of the way and let, <laughs> let the, 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 uh, organizational chart and their comfort with risk, like, to that, to the story you just shared. That's so excellent. That VP of engineering is like, wait a minute, they're coming for me if I extend this again. So you're basically, so like that changed his, he or she's whole perspective on what the, you know, how, how to approach it. So I love that as a, as an approach. Okay. We can't talk about the future of AppSec engineers without addressing generative AI, chat GPT, BARD, whatever, whatever, however you want to get to it. How does generative AI impact the future of this role of AppSec engineer? Yeah, it's already impacting. Um, so what I've seen on my team today is that we get pulled into a lot of security views and threat models. And sometimes we don't really understand the technology behind it. Um, and what I've seen some of my junior, more intermediate engineers is like, they will ask chat GPT, Hey, what is uh, Kafka? Uh, what are, how does RDS? Uh, what are some concerns that I may have with RDS? Um, it doesn't provide you the full picture, but it at least points us in the right direction of some of the things that we can think about. So to, even today, uh, ChatGPT can help us. And in the future, I do hope uh, they can. It can help us a lot more. But um, the flip side of it is we're going to be seeing a lot of AI in our organizations as well. And how do we protect the data going into AI? Um, I know that Microsoft has put out great, uh, I think a top 10 uh, threat modeling uh, AI sort of, of risks that we should be concerned with. I know that um, members on some of our team, security teams have started already diving deep and performing actual threat models on some of our AI models that we have in itself, ML AI models. So yeah. Uh, this is this is here. This is today. We can leverage it to help us to do better threat models. And we also need to make sure that the data that we are collecting and hoping to actually make it easier for our customers doesn't get polluted or corrupted by outside adversaries uh, for these sort of purposes as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I, when I think about generative AI in, in general, which is kind of a weird thing to say, I just realized, but it's, I don't see like AI is not going to replace AppSec engineers. It's not going to replace developers. It's not going to replace. There are some people that believe that, that are from that school of thought. I'm not one of them. I believe that generative AI is going to 2X to 5X what an AppSec engineer can do. To your point here, where you already have folks who are saying, who are using it as a resource to quickly gain knowledge about something that they would have had to, you know, Google in the past and, and read, decipher various web pages to try to figure out what is the, you know, well, this one says this, this one says this. Now you've got a single source of, of truth kind of happening there. And so I, I see this as more of a tool that can help those AppSec engineers do more. So we know we don't have enough AppSec engineers, both in our industry and in most companies would and no one's going to say, well, we're a little, we're, we've got a few too many AppSec engineers. They're just sitting around. They don't really have the eat, drink coffee. They don't really, there's just not that much for them to do. Nobody's going to say that. So anything that we could do that would, that would help them to even 1.5 X their output is a, a positive step forward for changing the business, uh, helping the business to think more about security. Um, I think it's all, it's all, all good stuff. Yeah, I agree 100%. Uh, it will supplement us and it will help us be better at what we need to do. Uh, put it very succinctly. Thank you, Chris. I've been thinking about this quite a bit <laughs> lately as far as how to, and, and listening and, and like all of us, you know, learn, I'm learning a lot from a lot of different people. I'm, I'm reading things, listening to things like it's such a new area and there's so many different facets to it. I'm just trying to absorb as much knowledge from other folks that um, have, have, you know, real backgrounds in this and, and how all this stuff comes together. So Jeevan, if you were to, give us a key takeaway or a call to action about the future application security engineer. 
what, where, where would you go with that? Is it a call to action? Is it a key takeaway? How do you want to land the plane here? Yeah, I, I want to first say the future is bright. Um, it's exciting. It's um, where all of us really want to go. Um, we're going to see even stronger partnerships with our engineering teams. Uh, everyone's starting to care more and more about security. You're right. Maybe 2023, maybe 2024, maybe 2025 is going to be the year of the application. Um, so we'll see better and stronger partnerships. Um, what I'll ask of uh, application security engineers is that um, make sure that you're um, having more breadth and depth to your skills. Uh, so um, if you are very heavy on the application security side, uh, threat modeling, bug bounty, and all that, learn how to do a bit more software development. Think about how you can scale your programs. Think about how you can ensure that the programs that you build will last longer than you. And those that are good in both of those domains, start thinking about how do you build that next generation, either of junior engine, uh, junior security engineers or engineers themselves, where that you can impart your knowledge on them. So um, let's all get iteratively a little bit better uh, at what we do. And then that will just make our companies a lot safer and much safer for our users as well. Excellent. Jeevan, it's always such a joy to have you on the podcast because you have so much knowledge and wisdom. And I'm just, I'm sitting here taking it all in. Just thank you so much for sharing, being willing to share all these things from inside, you know, kind of some inside experience and, and how we bring this all together. And it's just, it's really helpful. I mean, we got a mini lesson in democratizing vulnerability management right in the middle of this. Like that's, that's the thing I just, I love about your approach. You're just willing to provide that and share that with us so that we can all learn from it. And I know I, I learned many things already just in this conversation, many things that I can apply. So thanks for taking the time. And we look forward to the next, next time that you join us here to bring some more wisdom for our, our audience. Thank you so much for inviting me. I love talking about all of the mistakes that I've made in my career so that other people can not make those same mistakes. Uh, really appreciate uh, always chatting. All right. Thanks, Stephen.